It's time now for the Mule Train News Program on this Friday, February the 11th, 2022. Brought to you today by Leal's Mexican Restaurant. Church service for Palestina Perez, 89 a mule. She was held yesterday afternoon, Thursday, February the 10th at LBN Pastor here in Mule. She with Dr. Ezekiel Pacina of Abilene officiating. Burial followed in the Sudan Cemetery. Palestina died on Saturday, February the 5th in Lubbock. She was born July the 11th, 1932 in Premont, Texas to Placido Tanguma and Josefina Barrientes. She married Andres Barra Perez in Kennedy, Texas on January the 18th, 1950. Palestina was a housewife and a homemaker. She was a member of the Spanish Assembly of God. She is preceded in death by her husband, Andres, her parents, five sisters, six brothers, and a daughter, Deanna uh, Perez. Palestina is survived by seven sons, Freddie Perez, and his wife, Anna of Muleshoe, Andy Perez Jr. and his wife, Norma of Colorado City, Texas, Roy Perez of Muleshoe, Roland Perez and his wife, Connie of Brandon, Mississippi, Adrian Perez of Fresno, California, Norman Perez and his wife, Christy of Arlington, Ronnie Perez and his wife, Shelby of Fate, Texas, uh, her eight daughters, Mary Jo DeLeon and her husband, Fred of Earth, Belinda Garza and her husband, John of Sudam, Yolanda Jaramillo of Muleshoe, Diamond Perez of Hereford, Onada Solis and her husband, Sam of Lubbock, Christine June Perez of Muleshoe, Connie Eichem of Muleshoe, Bonnie Ellis of Amarillo, her 37 grandchildren and 43 great-grandchildren also survive her, along with 17 great-great-grandchildren and seven great-great-great-grandchildren. That's pretty amazing. Online condolences can be made at ellisfuneralhomes.com, and please keep the family of Palestina Perez on your prayer list. Today, our funeral services were held yesterday afternoon, Thursday, February the 10th at LBN Pastor, and burial followed in the Sudan Cemetery. James Leroy Sterley, 86, of Muleshoe, died on Sunday, February the 6th. Here in Muleshoe, he was born February the 17th, 1935, in Bushnell, Nebraska, to Joe and Rose Klobuchar Sterley. He married Shirley Christensen in Bushnell on August the 17th, 1969. A service will be announced in Pine Bluff, Wyoming, at a later date. James was a roughneck and a driller in the oil fields as well as a farmer. He loved fishing, hunting, and camping. He is preceded in death by his parents, three brothers, and four sisters. James is survived by his wife, Shirley, two daughters, Jennifer Clark of Cheyenne, Wyoming, and Shelley Morris and her husband, Brian of Muleshoe. His five grandchildren survive him, Dustin and his wife, Donna, Kaylee, Katie, Luke, and his wife, Brianna, and Michaela. And his two great-grandchildren, Ronan and Reese, also survive him as well. Please keep the family of James Leroy Sterley, 86 of Muleshoe, on your prayer list today. Well, this past Wednesday was National Signing Day. They had a ceremony at Muleshoe High School there at the Carrie Moore Auditorium. This past Wednesday, February the 9th, where Jason Richards, the MHS MISD Athletic Director, along with the Lady Mules head basketball coach Kim Chafin introduced the players for and student athletes at Muleshoe that were uh, that signed to go on and play athletics in college. The four that were uh, that signed were Andre Alfaro. He signed to play uh, a football and a scholarship at Saul Ross State University. Zach Hasley who signed as well to play football at McPherson College in Kansas, and Brennan Davis, who signed to play football at Eastern New Mexico University in Portales. Also, Natalie Ambries, who signed to play basketball at Whalum Baptist University for the Flying Queen. So congratulations to all four of those student-athletes at MHS Andre, Andre Alfaro, Zach Hasley, Brennan Davis and Natalie Ambridge. You can see our video on the front page 
of our website, MuleshoeTV.com, and it has the full video of that occurrence on Wednesday morning at MHS, and it is our Meet Your Neighbor for February, brought to you by United Supermarkets. Also at the end, a presentation is made by our superintendent, Dr. R.L. Richards, and the MHS principal, Cindy Basir, as they were just informed that the Texas Education Agency announced this week the nomination of 26 Texas public schools as the 2022 National Blue Ribbon uh, School designees, and one of those includes Muleshoe High School in the category Exemplary Achievement Gap Closing Schools. Initiated by the United States Department of Education, in 1982, the National Blue Ribbon Schools Program recognizes public and private elementary, middle, and high schools that have high student achievement and or highlights where exemplary progress has been made in closing achievement gaps among student subpopulations. Since the program's founding, 9,000 schools across the nation have received this prestigious designation. In the Lone Star State, public schools are considered for nomination based on student performance on the first administration of the previous year's star assessments as well as college and career data and graduation rates if applicable. This year's nominees highlight the diverse learning environments found across the state with the inclusion of traditional elementary, middle, and high school campuses along with magnet and early high schools early college high schools. These nominees also represent 12 of the state's 20 education service center regions spanning from the Panhandle down to the coastal bend and from the Piney Woods of East Texas to the plains of West Texas. The nominated schools must now complete a rigorous application process conducted by the U uh, U.S. Department of Education. National award winners will be announced September 2022. Schools that receive the designation will be recognized at the National Blue Ribbon School Awards Ceremony in Washington, D.C. So that is awesome that our Muleshoe High School has been nominated uh, by the director of the Texas Education Agency as an exemplary achievement gap closing school to this National Blue Ribbon uh, program. And they'll have to fill out some application processes, and we'll see what happens September of twenty. 22. I was looking through the list of other Texas schools nominated to this, and Spring Lake Earth Elementary Middle School is the only closest school. There's another couple, Wink Elementary, way down south of us. Uh, it seems like I saw as well Smyre schools, but other than that, Muleshoe is the only one right here in the area as a high school. Spring Lake Earth Elementary Middle School also is in that list as a nominee. So congratulations to all of our administration, teachers, faculty, and all of the students at Muleshoe High School. And again, watch at the end of the National Signing Day video and you can see Dr. R.L. Richards, our superintendent, and share, um, and um, Cindy Basir, our principal, talk about that Blue Ribbon Award nomination. Another video that we just released this week, a really good, interesting one you'll want to watch. It's a f uh, uh, spotlighting all of the career and technical education programs that are available through our Muleshoe High School CTE uh, Awareness Month. Highlight Month is all month of February, and we'll be highlighting with this video along with a couple of others that will take a more in-depth look at some of these CTE courses available at Muleshoe High School, and uh, that's available now on the front page of our website, MuleshoeTV.com. As part of that, you can see uh, Larry Cribs and his Muleshoe Robotics team at, at high school, and uh, we'll have a more in-depth look at them here in a week or two but recently at the league championship meet they had some great success as team 18483 and team 18484 competed in the finals recording the highest score of the area they placed second overall team 18483 received a second in the innovative award team 18484 received second in the motivate award and team 19779 competed in the semifinals. 
All three teams did an amazing job, says their coach, Larry Cribbs, at, at the contest and represented Muleshoe proudly. We will find out who will advance to the regional meet this upcoming week. Teams consist of 18483, Kalana Burdell, Yuritsi Rodriguez, Yaritsi Quezada, Jose Chaparro, Team 18484, Isaac Flores, Bryson Woodard, Jonathan Valencia, Giovanni Palejo, and Team 19779, Isaiah Cereza, Ernie Toscano, Rodrigo Hernandez are all on that team. And, of course, as we mentioned, the coach is Larry Cribbs at MHS. And you can see two of those robots performing some of their tasks in our video that's spotlighting the CTE program right now on the front page of our website, MuleshoeTV.com. We'll be back with more Mule Train news in just a few moments, so please stay tuned. Hey, Mule Shoe. I'm Julia Reynolds, and whenever I come to town to visit family, I always choose Liao's Mexican Restaurant, preferably more than one. My favorite is the Loris Special with extra queso. It gets no better than that. The original Liao's Mexican Restaurant is located at 1010 West American Boulevard, where you can dine in with the Liao's family's authentic dishes or carry out by simply calling ahead at 806-272-3294. Well, we hate to report that the Lady Mules in their final regular season game lost to the Littlefield Lady Wildcats 36-30. to It was a really hard-fought close game. But they wound up losing 36-30 to against Littlefield. And now we'll have to play Littlefield again in a seeding game because both split the uh, the uh, district competition as the Lady Mules won the first uh, matchup between them and Littlefield. And Littlefield won the second one. And so they're still tied for second place in district. So that seeding game will be today here on Friday. Uh, February the 11th at Muleshoe High School. The game will begin at 5 p.m. at the gymnasium. And so that will be for second place in our district. So make sure to go out and support the Lady Mules. They're in the um, playoffs no matter what happens. But this, the winner will take second place and the loser will take third place in our district. Brownfield uh, girls have already clinched first place in the district. Of course, they're the um, the uh, state champions from last year and were perfect in district competition. But the Lady Mules and the Lady Wildcats will play again tonight at 5 p.m. right here in Muleshoe. The Lady Mules will host Littlefield at the gymnasium at high school for the second place seating in District 3A, and uh, that will begin at 5 here on Friday, February the 11th. So good luck to the Kim Chafin and her squad, the Lady Mules. Brownfield is 12-0 and 0 on the District 3. Um, it's District 3-3A uh, on the season. The Lady Mules are nine and three. Littlefield is nine and three, and Denver City is six and six. So those will be the four teams that go into the playoffs. The boys are out of it uh, f for the playoff hunt as they lost to Littlefield uh, last Tuesday, seventy-three to thirty. But they will play Denver City tonight, and then next week on Tuesday finish out their season against La Mesa. So good luck to the Mules on their last two games. Also something we should have mentioned earlier with the National Signing Day is Brendan Davis signed to play with ENMU. He's also just been named to the Texas Sports Riders Association Class 3A All-State Football Team Honorable Mention is a tight end linebacker. So congratulations to Brendan Davis on the honorable mention list for the Class 3A All-State football team by the Texas Sports Riders Association. Congratulations to Brennan Davis. It's very well deserved. It's time now for the weather forecast on this Friday, February the 11th, 2022. Brought to you today by K&K &K Pharmacy, your locally home-owned hometown pharmacy. 
here in Muleshoe at 1411 West American Boulevard. See Christine Isaacson or Crystal Alicon, their two friendly pharmacists, or any of their great employees. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. at 1411 West American Boulevard, or call 806 272 75 one one high blood pressure is mostly asymptomatic which can hinder detection and treatment while placing you at increased risk for heart attack stroke or kidney disease so it's important to get your blood pressure check regularly ask a pharmacist come by and they can help at K&K pharmacy also they remind you that some pet medications such as special antibiotics aren't available already made they need to be created or compounded and they compound right in the store at K&K pharmacy right here in Muleshoe compounded medications generally cost more but they might be the only option for your pet's specific needs they offer pet medication and compounding talk to their pharmacist or any of the employees there at K&K pharmacy for more information on how to transfer a prescription through K&K Pharmacy for your favorite pets. 1411 West American Boulevard. Again, they're open Monday through uh, Fridays, 9 a.m. till 6 p.m., 806-272-7511. Come in to the store, call them. They can deliver to your home right here in the Muleshoe area or use their convenient drive through on the west side of the building at K&K Pharmacy. Christine Isaacson, Crystal Alicon, or any of their wonderful employees at 1411 West American Boulevard. Well, we've had some really nice days this week, but it's been sort of a roller coaster still. We hadn't had any extreme cold weather this week like we had the past previous two weeks, but that may change here as we go into the evening hours on Friday. Looking at the forecast for this afternoon, sunny. High near 62, but it will be very breezy with a northeast wind 20 to 25 miles per hour. We already see that this morning as it's nearly 1 p.m. this afternoon. It's breezy outside and 58 degrees outside our studio here at 1011 West 3rd. But then tonight, a 50% chance of snow after 3 a.m. Increasing clouds low around 23 tonight. Northeast winds 15 to 20 miles per hour, new snow accumulation of less than half an inch possible. So if it does snow, it will be very light and a 50% chance after 3 a.m. Then Saturday morning, a 20% chance of snow before 10 a.m. Cloudy through mid-morning, then gradually clearing. High will be only at 47 tomorrow. North-northeast winds 10 to 15 miles per hour becoming west in the afternoon hours mostly clear saturday night low around 20 southwest winds around 10 miles per hour then sunny on sunday high near 58 west winds around 10 miles per hour becoming east in the afternoon hours clear sunday night low around 23 south winds around 10 miles per hour then monday sunny high near 68 degrees west southwest winds between 10 and 15 miles per hour monday night clear Low around 27 southwest winds, around 10 miles per hour. Then Tuesday, windy, patchy, blowing dust afternoon, mostly sunny, high near 72. Southwest winds around 10 to 20 miles per hour. So going to be very spring-like with a high in the lower 70s, but patchy, blowing dust in the afternoon hours on Tuesday. Tuesday night, partly cloudy, low around 32. Then Wednesday, a slight chance of showers, mostly sunny, high near 67. Boy, we could use some rain. Then Wednesday night, a chance of rain, mostly cloudy, low around 24. Thursday, a chance of rain, possibly snow, partly sunny, high around 44. So some rain and snow chances come into the forecast midweek, Wednesday, and Thursday. But we do have a 50% chance of snow tonight. After 3 a.m. to 10 a.m., uh, so we'll see what happens. They're only saying if it does snow, new snow accumulation of less than half an inch possible. So it's one of those things. It will warm up into the upper 40s, though, on Saturday. So if it does snow, any it will be uh, mostly gone uh, before the end of the day. k k Pharmacy has presented to you this edition of the Weather Forecast. Legacy 5 Gospel Group will be in concert on Saturday, March the 5th, right here in Muleshoe, beginning at 6 
that evening at the Calvary Baptist Church, 1733 West Avenue. See, everyone in the whole area is invited. The concert is free. A love offering will be taking this Legacy 5 Gospel Group will be in concert Saturday, March the 5th, here in Muleshoe at 6 p.m. at the Calvary Baptist Church, 1733 West Avenue. See, everyone is invited. The concert is free. A love offering will be taken for the group Legacy 5. So mark that on your calendar. Saturday, March the 5th, Legacy 5 at the Calvary Baptist Church. The First Baptist Church here in Muleshoe needs to hire a custodian. It pays $15 per hour. Stop by the church to apply in person at 220 West Avenue E. Or if you uh, have more information you need, you can call them at 806-272-4224. That's the first Baptist church here in Mill. She was hiring a custodian for at $15 per hour. Stop by the church to apply. Uh, 220 West Avenue E right here in Mill. Or you can call 806-272-4224. The Muleshoe Area Medical Center reminds you to get vaccinated Muleshoe for you, for your family, for your community, or for your country. You can find out how through either of their clinics by calling today, 806-272-4524. Also, the Muleshoe Area Medical Center offers a convenient uh, close to home. Continue your recovery through their swing bed program. If you or a loved one needs more time to heal after an illness, injury, or surgery, the Muleshoe Area Medical Center Swing Bed Program can help. Call the Swing Bed Coordinator at 806-272-4524 or go by their website, muleshoehospital.com backslash recovery for more information through the Muleshoe Area Medical Center. We have an update from Zaina Carpenter, our city secretary, on the general election, which will take place on May the 7th. These are the candidates that have filed for a place on the ballot as of this week for the city of Muleshoe. District 1 filed uh, uh, the incumbent Crystal Alicon along with the District 2 incumbent Lupe Mendoza. Both of them have filed so far. No one is opposing them yet. The Muleshoe Independent School District at large position, uh, the incumbent Kevin Morris along with the incumbent in the second at large position, Ashley Turnbow. The Muleshoe Area Hospital District has District 1 seat open. No one's filed for that one yet. District 3 seat is still open. No one's filed for that. But the District 5 seat incumbent has filed Zona Gatewood to run. For those who wish to run for office, candidate packets are available for pickup at the City Secretary's Office at City Hall um, at um, here in Muleshoe until 5 p.m. Friday, February the 18th. So that's next a week, a week from today, the last day for an in individual to register to vote in these elections is Thursday, April the 7th. So that's already passed. If you want more information, you can contact Zaina Carpenter, City Secretary, 806-272-4528. And the early voting on this May 7th general election will be at City Hall as well at 215 South 1st Street. It will begin Monday, April the 25th, and end Tuesday, May the 3rd. And then, of course, a General Election Day is Saturday, May the 7th, and early voting and the election will all take place at City Hall here in Muleshoe, 215 South 1st Street. There's also... Um, primary elections that are going on here in texas and the primary election day is march the first it will be out at the bailey county coliseum early voting is uh, starting next week on monday february the 14th through february the 25th you vote early at the bailey county courthouse the filing deadline is already passed, but contested races are between current Bailey County Judge Sherry Harrison and Basil Nash and current uh, Bailey County Commissioner Precinct 4, Jim Daniel and Shorty Drennan. All other races are uncontested locally here on this primary election. And again, the primary election date is March the 1st out of the Bailey County Coliseum. 
Vote early starting next week, February 14th through February the 25th at the Bailey County Courthouse. I want to mention this again. This is one of our top stories last week, but realignment took place in the UIL. And for 2022 through 2024 football, Muleshoe is in 3A Division I District 2, along with River Road, Bushland, Dalhart, and Shallowwater. And uh, as you can see, Littlefield has dropped down to 3A Division 2. They're in District 4. So that is sort of sad as we've had a lot of similarly sized towns stick with us over the years and fall away one by one into the Division Two ranks. And now Littlefield has gone down along with most every other one. When I was in high school, our district was Tulia and Floyd Data, Dimmitt, Friona, Littlefield, and Muleshoe. And now uh, Muleshoe is the only one left in Division One. I. I think every one of those other uh, schools and teams are now in Division Two for football. Again, the Mules are in District 2, 3A Division 1, along with River Road, Bushland, Dalhart, and Shallowwater. Right next to us in District 1, 3A Division 1, Brownfield, Denver City, Kermit, La Mesa, and Slayton. Now in basketball, there's no Division 1 and Division 2 uh, settings. So the 3A District 3 for boys and girls, Mules basketball, they will be in a district with Brownfield, Denver City, Demet, Friona, La Mesa, Littlefield, and Stanton, which is way down between Midland and Big Spring. Poor Stanton is going to have to do a lot of traveling to get up around uh, 200 miles one way to get to any of these schools here in the Muleshoe, uh, Dimmitt, Friona, Littlefield area. But again, basketball, boys and girls, the Mules and Lady Mules are in District 3, uh, District 3, 3A, along with Brownfield, Denver City, Dimmitt, Friona, La Mesa, Littlefield, and Stanton, way out south uh, between Midland and Big Spring. Victor in Sudan needs to hire a handyman and a personal helper, uh, someone that can cook and pick up groceries and work around the old hotel that, uh, motel that he lives in there on the edge of town. Please call him at 806 393 2588. That's Victor needs to hire a handyman and personal helper. At the old motel there uh, on the edge of Sudan, call 806-393-2588. Ask for Victor Prentiss. On your prayer list today, please remember Jerry Hicks and Doris Scott, Ruby Green, Mom Megan Reynolds as she's continuing speech therapy twice a week in Lubbock, Ronnie Angeli, Bruce and Cindy Purdy, Jeff Skipworth, Carolyn uh, Turner, Royce Turner, Janice Snell, Sue Basir, and Travis. Remember Jim Young and Pat King. Uh, Ed and Carol Cox, Betty Ott, Carolyn Stovall, J.W. Harrington, Melba, Melbourne Tom Bratcher, Betty Noble, Joe Jinx, Daryl Embry all need to be on your prayer list today as well. Please keep those that are grieving the recent loss of a loved one, including James Leroy Sterley. Also, remember on your prayer list today, the family of Palestina Perez. The family of Betty Fitzgerald needs to be on your prayer list today. The family of Bonnie Carpenter. The family of Carolyn Kendall. The family of Julia B. Patter, uh, Patterson. The family of David Alonzo Rodriguez. And the family of Chago Vasquez. Well, it's just about time for us to go on this edition of the New York Train News. You Friday, trade! 11, 2022, ah, brought to you today by Liao's Mexican you Restaurant. Trade. You can hear our latest meal train news programs free of charge on demand on our website, MuleShoeTV.com, along with all of our old and archived ones. MuleShoeTV.com, click on the Liberty, meal train Liberty, news link at the top, Liberty, send over the page. I'm Tumbleweed Smith, from Iraq to Sugar Moon. Details in a moment on The Sound of Texas. 
The Sound of Texas is brought to you here on MuleshoeTV.com by Bailey County Electric Cooperative Association with offices in Muleshoe at 610 East American Boulevard as well as in Morton at 1744 State Highway 114. They're celebrating rural electrification right here in the Muleshoe area through Bailey County Electric since 1939. They're owned by the members that they serve. Call 806-272-4504. Check them out online at BCEC. COOP.com, the board of directors, the members, the employees, the manager, CEO, David Markle, all hope you enjoy this Sound of Texas with Tumbleweed Smith. Trish McMillan of Heiko spent nearly 30 years with an electric company, then decided to do something different. She went to Iraq for two years. I was a government contractor. I kept track of where the money was being sent and what the budget was. It was a real good opportunity for me. A lot of my family had been in the military and stuff, and I appreciated that, and I appreciate what all these people do for us. We have a good country, thanks to them. Too many people take good stuff here for granted. While she was over there, she and her sisters bought an old building in Heiko and turned it into an antique store. It is full of merchandise. Gift items. I've got clothing. I have a website that I sell clothing and gift items on there. I sell the Annie Sloan chalk paints. We have workshops for that. Trish has it by herself now. It's been there 16 years. Before COVID hit, I was going to England and France a couple of times a year and buying and having it shipped home in containers. So when COVID hit, there that went. I couldn't travel. I don't really want to travel right now until I know that it's a little safer. But that didn't stop me from buying. I do still buy online, and I have two very good shippers over there that help me. And so I've been still re- receiving inventory. I had a container delivered from Belgium about three weeks ago today. And then I'm expecting another one in a couple of weeks from England. The name is Sugar Moon Market. I was in Iraq laying in bed one night and it just came to me sugar moon antiques market i changed it to market now because i carry a lot of different things iraq wasn't her only out of country experience when i was about nine i guess my daddy worked in africa drilling water wells we didn't really want to go because we was just a bunch of kids little kids you know we was gonna miss everybody at home but we wanted to go because our daddy was there you know but when he come home and told us we was going back home to texas we didn't want to go because we really liked it there too it was nice trish spends a lot of time in the building i like what i do and that makes a difference you can't always find a building like this you know and I live here, too. <laughs> uh-huh. That's how well I like it. You know? <laughs> Trish McMillan of Heiko. I'm Tumbleweed Smith with The Sound of Texas.